Okay, it's great. It's working. Hey, my name's Kurt. And I'm Luke. And this is The Breakdown. Are you Kurt or Farmer Joe? Oh, I'm Farmer Joe. Here I am today. Where's I, your horse? I don't know if my accent's going to get just right. <laughs> <laughs> From North Carolina. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Farmer Joe. I've been having a blast, bro. That was so fun. I thought it was so funny that you popped into the kids' ministry. Yeah, well, I, I stopped after worship to go uh, to get some coffee or get some yeah. water or something. And I was walking back to service and I just saw the kids ministry going on and you were waiting and I was like, oh yeah, Kurt's going to play Farmer Joe. And I was like, oh, let's just stop and watch this. I haven't watched kids ministry. Isn't here. it great? So, it's awesome. And you know what happens when you stop and watch, you inevitably get roped in because I have literally just written you into the script for yes, this week, have, Luke. So <laughs> kid, the kids will have to find out oh my what goodness. happens Sunday. And I know. if you're a parent, you can ask your kids how that goes. Oh, uh, so. we are having a blast. I will say it is tons of fun um, being able to write our own curriculum and put all the skits together. It's a lot of work, but mm -hmm. it takes a large team and sometimes a very small team to brainstorm. I find- The kids loved it. Yeah. You can, you can tell. They were engaged. You know, and that's one of the things that I was sharing uh, with uh, some of the team members is like, hey, you know, sometimes just throwing a curve and getting goofy because I think people were just like, I did not expect that from you. And I'm like, you you have to have fun. You have to just be eccentric off the walls in the face. Um, and it, I actually have to say this past weekend reminded me the sum total of the weekend actually made me miss youth ministry. Mm -hmm. I was a youth pastor for 10 years and I, oh, I really felt it this I weekend. I can see that. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. So um it was really cool and again i guess we'll just wait we will not give away the secret of who you're going to be this week i actually am trying to envision that and i'm just going to say this do you have glasses that you can wear for us please absolutely okay great i'm, yeah. I'm gonna expect no, glasses. I've, been, I've been working on it okay so. good dude okay wonderful so kids get ready if you're listening we're gonna have a lot of fun our children this season this month have been going through soil seed water and roots and i just want to clarify for any parents who might be like, wow, you are way off time. Like it's now snowing, it's winter. It makes no sense that you're doing this. Well, in fact, where we're going for springtime is the fruit of the spirit. Mm. So we want to make sure that we're teaching the kids early on that very first parable that Jesus taught. He said, if you don't get this parable, you're not going to get any others. Mm. It's the kingdom. You got to understand yeah. the soil and the seed and the sower. Uh, so we've been in it all month long. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to continue this week talking about the importance of water, oh, so and good. you're going to help us with that. Yes, I am. I love it, Luke. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I, there, I can't be there, so I'm going to need somebody to record you're you. You're going to build up so much hype. We're going to have a whole crowd oh, of parents. There better be. Outside. I love it. Good. Show up. So. Find out what's happening with the kids. It's wonderful. And uh, do we still need people to do help we, with children's ministry? We always need people to help with kids' ministry. All when, right. When you have there 200 we go. plus kids... You always need people because okay. we rotate out. Well, yeah. I just think there's someone that's listening and they've been wondering how they can get involved. Yep. And here's a great way to get involved. For sure. You know, in the old days, we used to crack jokes. There's this old saying that's like, hey, the pastor would go up to somebody and he would say, I really would like you to get involved here and do this. And the person would say, well, I just don't feel led. And so one pastor actually started going around and carrying a piece of lead in his pocket. <laughs> and he said, here, feel this. Now you can get involved. You go where the need is. That's awesome. And you, do you know what the commitment level would be? I'm going to, Luke, you're going to fall off your chair. I'm actually getting warm talking about this. I'm unzipping my jacket because it's so powerful to me. No. The commitment for kids ministry is about not including preparation time. And you're not really writing anything. You're more so following the curriculum that yep. we're putting out there is about an hour and a half to two hours a month. That's it? That's it. Okay. You come, we have the this team, Pastor Holly, Kelsey, Pastor Roger, the whole group, Diana, they have put together a team that really rotates on serving almost once a month. So our, our teachers really teach once a month. You can do more if you'd like, but they've got a great system and a That's great awesome. schedule. That so, is awesome. And you get to impact the future. Oh man. HPC. I love it. I love it. It's super awesome. So speaking of impacting the future, oh, here I am trying to do my drum roll, <laughs> knocking my phone off. Let me just try that again. And my friend, we had a vote on Sunday impacting the future of HPC. This is all preparatory mm -hmm. as we're getting ready for this new sanctuary. 
And it was a big vote. And, you know, I, I don't want to say that fists were thrown and fights were happening in the hallway, but it was pretty intense. It was. It was. I, I just wish that, you know, 10 a.m. had a larger representation. But where were the 10 a.m. people? They were sleeping. Where were they? I'm like with you. I, I literally talked to Ashley as we were leaving and I'm like, I really pray we need to help this 10 a.m. group. I'm like, I almost feel like the box shouldn't have been see through that. Oh, <laughs> don't get me started on that. Do not get oh, me started on goodness. that. If the box wasn't see through then it wouldn't be so influencing. I feel like it totally influenced some uh, some people's numbers there. So whatever I will say. Either nine or ten, I will concede. Absolutely. Fine. I will be there. I will be there. I'm not going anywhere. I was very excited for the 10 o'clock service. I'm just gonna just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> if my vote counts, <laughs> if it can count more than once, I was excited. <laughs> and so are you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What do you foresee yourself doing on a Sunday if you're coming to church? You and I wouldn't come for 10, though. It's not going to happen. We come earlier. No. Well, I mean, that was part of it. Yeah. If we're serving on worship team, you have to show up an hour early for the sound check. And for the, sure. You know, to, you know, just to find out what's going to happen during worship, you know, blend in and all that. Um, But, you know, getting up early during the week, it is nice to have, you know, some time to have a slower day. And, you yeah. know, Pastor Zach was talking a lot on first service about Sabbath. Yeah. The importance of Sabbath. True. Um. And I think sometimes, uh, especially if you're involved at church, sometimes the Sunday morning, um, if you're getting, if you're, if you're, if you're hectic, it can take away from that uh, Sabbath rest, mm. um, which is why it's important to have other times during the week. Like I've, I've heard other pastors say that their Sabbath day is like a different day. Correct. Correct. I think when you are serving really intensely yeah. in the ministry, be mindful of that. You do have to make sure that you have a second separate Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You do want a Sabbath. You do want to rest. Um, can't push it all the time. You got to make sure that you're giving rest, even God rested. So, well, that's awesome. I guess we'll wait and see what happens. Um, I'm so used to hearing like all the sounds in my head. I'm like, wow, we sound pretty boring just talking here. I'm like, <laughs> I hear all the sounds in my head. They're going up all these different, you know, drum rolls. And I'm like, man, there's no guarantee that David's going to be able to plug it all in there. He told me before, stop putting me on the spot and, and telling me to do it. <laughs> David, we're at seven minutes and 20 seconds. If you wanted to punch in. Hey man, I am really, really grateful as we come to the second week of the year. Pastor Zach bringing us in on this word, mm -hmm. which um, coming out of last year, I just loved. Between last week's message, we're talking about trials, yeah. things coming at us, uh, things we're going to be going through. And this week, kind of looking at where are the access points? You yeah. know, we're in John 10. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the good shepherd. He is going to call us. He's going to come in through the door. We're going to know his voice. We're going to know it's him. But being mindful of having to serve. I mean, I just was in love with the imagery on Sunday. I'm right there. I'm, I'm with Hezekiah walking, you know, yep. the, the, uh, the footing there, the, um, the wall yep. and inspecting it. I'm like, oh, this is really, really good. I think something really important for us to pause at the start of this year, mm -hmm. uh, if we're in a prayer season, a fast season yeah. where we're pressing in and seeking the Lord, great question right now. God, Absolutely. where where yeah. are the cracks? What's going on? Yeah. And you know, that whole chapter, John 10, where, where Jesus talks about himself as the good shepherd mm -hmm. and we are the sheep, I encourage everyone to go read it and we'll see what happens on Sunday. But Pastor Zach did hint uh, that maybe we might still be in this passage. Maybe we'll see what happens. It's quite interesting. Um, but I think... It's really important for us to just start there um, with the imagery of sheep and a shepherd mm. in a pasture, in the sheepfold, yeah. and the gate. Yeah. And remembering like where we are in that, in that, um, that analogy that Jesus uh, is teaching with. Uh, we are never the shepherd. We are always the sheep. I'm so glad you're saying this. Uh, because I, I, because I think one of the ways the enemy tries to create fear in us is by getting us to take on roles that the shepherd is only meant to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I don't know if you want to expound on that at all, but I, I really think that's important to lean into the fact that Jesus is the true shepherd, you know, and even in our greenhouses, we'll call them under shepherds. And we think about pastoring, you know, we're, we're under shepherding, under the great shepherd mm -hmm. helping, but it really is him who's doing the work. We, we're, we're not trying to do it. We're not trying to take mm -hmm. it on. 
We're just trying to listen in for his voice. And I will say that sometimes um, we're able to help one another. And, yes, and that's, listening that's to how that it's shepherd. designed. That, that's how yeah. it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, I think, you know, especially as we talk about, um, you know, what pa- the message that, that Pastor Zach brought, where we're talking about these access points mm. um, and, and, and repairing the walls. Uh, the sheep cannot repair the wall. No. Only the shepherd can. Mm-hmm. However, as sheep, we have to cooperate with the shepherd. That's true. And uh, Jesus walks alongside us as the she- as the shepherd. He rescues us out of out of the ditch. Yeah, you know, if we are that one sheep that strays away, he's going to go get us and bring us back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it comes to doing this inner healing in our life and yeah. repairing these holes, it's us being willing to surrender to him. And like Zach was saying, like he, it, it's you know. When you're kneeling at the altar, when you're praying before him, Jesus will point out where the holes are. Yeah. And then we go on a journey where he heals us. Mm-hmm. And what we're going to, what you find is when you surrender, you're giving space for him to come in and do what needs to be done. Yeah. This is so true, Luke. I, I'm just, uh, I, I'm really taken aback at this point in a good way because this is on the heels of quite an amazing experience for me back on December 20th. And I've been saying it. You know, here I've been hinting at it and just saying it directly, but had such an amazing healing um, in a time of prayer and yielding on December the 20th. And what Pastor Zach was articulating in an experience on Sunday is exactly what the Lord walked me through on December the 20th, just inspecting these gates and inspecting these walls to discover, wow, I did not realize, you know, when we think about a weight or a besetting sin, I'm Mm -hmm. I'm jumping right over to Hebrews 12, you know? We think about a weight or a besetting sin. How are we going to put that off? Well, if the Holy Spirit comes in and begins to re- reveal something, hey, you've been so focused on this spot over there or over here, you didn't even realize yeah. that these things have been jumping over the wall. Mm-hmm. So I know I'm kind of all over the place with the message, but I'm just really leaning into the what God is doing here. If we get into this time, and this is where I would say, Luke, that we'd be able to help one another. Um, if we don't really understand how to begin praying these prayers and letting the Lord reveal, I think we're so used to Luke to um, used to Luke. We're so used to just praying a prayer and moving on. Like God heard my prayer; He'll fix it when He wants to. We have totally botched yielding and waiting on right. the Lord well, and listening, 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 which was part of what we taught mm-hmm. the kids this past week. You know, it's one thing to read the word; it's another thing to allow that word to really take root inside. It's one thing to, you know, just say, okay, I read the word, I read my Bible, or I prayed my prayers today. Yep. Well, it's supposed to be this two-way street of communication where we're waiting on the Lord. God, what is it you want to reveal about this struggle right now, this besetting sin, this thing that is eating me up? Right, right. And I'm just thinking of two words that Pastor Zach mentioned on Sunday. They both start with D. So there's distraction and discernment. Yeah. The enemy's goal is to distract us. Yep. Uh, he distracts us using our own sins that prey on our own passions. You know, mm-hmm. the Bible says like you're led away by your passions, yeah. by your emotions, like all of, all those things are sinful nature. So he'll do anything he can to get us to go back into that life. Um, he'll bring trials into our life, all of that to distract us from what the uh, the Father is saying to us and the mission he's called us to. Yeah, and then. Uh, we find ourselves entangled. Mm-hmm. So how do we get out of that? Well, it's it's discernment and listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And if you are a believer, if if Jesus is your Savior, that is a promise that the Holy Spirit has come and now lives inside of you mm-hmm. as your comforter and your counselor. Yeah. And so when we're saying discernment, we're not saying uh, like using you know man made logic yep. or or. Uh, you know, or like something that you've just figured out. No, it's listening to the the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which will be orderly and will be in line with Scripture. Yeah. But it's we need to be led. Mm-hmm. We are sheep. We need to be led. And yeah. this is, goes back to the whole analogy of the sheep and the shepherd. So I am a sheep. Yeah. You are a sheep. I cannot protect myself. Right. But I have to stay close to the shepherd. Mm-hmm. I can walk I can I can walk away and get myself into trouble and, and when we talk about sin 
yeah, we're gonna we do sin and and we have free will. And when we do that, we open up our we open ourselves up to those consequences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the closer we stay to the good shepherd, the more we can hear his voice mm-hmm. clearer and the more he can mend and heal us. Yeah. So if there's, you know, just think about a sheep just in the natural sense. If something attaches on to that sheep, well, if that sheep is right by the shepherd, mm-hmm. he's going to be able to take care of it. Yeah. And so there are these things that we pick up just in the days, the, the courses of life. Yeah. And it's like, if we're right by the shepherd, he can help us dump that. He can help us deal with that. You know, Pastor Zach talked about the the access point. He brought up I just a number of things. I thought the illustration and the teaching on Sunday was so good. We'll get into the thief and the robber, all this stuff. But even something I think is worth bringing up because I've talked to some generations who don't really understand the soul tie. And mm-hmm. Pastor Zach took some time to expound on a soul tie. And I just think if you really want to understand it, I love what Pastor John uses. If it's anyone you can't say no to. Yeah. I also think about whether it's past relationships or experiences, anything that just instantly catches your heart and yep. you're caught up and you're like, oh my goodness, you're either taken up in, you know, crazy thoughts, anger, lust, whatever it may be, but your heart is just instantly flooded right there. And and yeah. I don't think we should be afraid of that. I think a lot of times we're running from the very things the Lord is allowing to kind of kick up in the surface. You right, know? right. Well, and this is the thing. Like we are, we are trans, the Bible says we are transformed by the renewing yes. of our mind. Yes. Right. Yes. So there's this process um, in, after I am saved, where the Holy Spirit again is guiding me and he's saying, all right, this is, we're going to change the way that you think. We're going to change um, how you see things, how you see the world, how you see the traumas that you've been through, how you see these relationships. Yeah. And, you know, a soul tie, another way of uh, looking at it, like that I find helpful for me is just thinking like unhealthy attachment. There, that's that's awesome. It's an unhealthy that's, attachment. That's really good. Um, Or, you know, like uh, maybe in your experience, like you've ever heard someone say, oh, that person has a psychological dependency on X. Or it could be a person, it could be a thing. Mm. There's like a tie there. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, so this is the, it's that kind of language and we should only be attached to Jesus. Yeah. Right. And so this is part of the Holy Spirit showing us these different idols in our life Mm -hmm. and access points that the enemy has gone into our life to wreak havoc and to take our eyes off of Jesus. Yep. So when that stuff comes up, you know, I think we're so used to just fighting it and pushing it down. No, mm-hmm. I, I can't feel that. I'm not supposed to feel that way. Or I've already dealt with that. I've already forgiven. Right. And and good counselors will teach you. Yeah, you may have forgiven, but there may still be work oh, yeah. to do there. Yep. There may still As be you some. come into healing. Yeah. 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 So it's awesome to stay, you know, with that shepherd and allow him as he brings things up. I used to run from a lot of these emotions and these different things. And coming to our church here has really helped me to be like, hey, if I'm in worship and something comes to my mind, or if I'm in prayer, something comes to my mind, yeah, it may surely be a distraction, but if it keeps coming and it's keep hammering and it's like something that's making me uncomfortable, maybe the Lord wants to do something with that. Maybe there's a cleansing and a healing. Maybe there's an access point that he wants to work with right now. Absolutely, because the enemy operates in lies Mm -hmm. and fear. Mm -hmm. And if there's a place that in your life where you are afraid to go, well, there's fear there that the enemy can then manipulate and use to distract you from your true identity as a son or a daughter of God. Yeah. And then, uh, but when we, when we walk with the shepherd and we walk with him to that hole, what it, what's really going to happen is he reveals his truth. Yeah. He reveals the truth of the brokenness. He reveals the truth that he has come to save and repair that brokenness. And then he heals it and he gives you a truth yeah. that you can then fight the enemy with yeah. when it comes to that broke when it's, it comes to that brokenness. It's so good. He heals the wound and it becomes a scar. Right. It's void of pain. Right. So you have a memory mm-hmm. without pain. He's able right. to heal and to cleanse. And you do start fighting from a place of victory. Mm -hmm. You're no longer like broken by that every time it hits you. Right. This is phenomenal. I'm telling you, this is exactly the healing that I received on December 20th this past year. I don't think I'll ever be. I will not be the same because of what the Lord did for me. Now, did you walk through that? um, I I know obviously the Holy Spirit walked you through that. Yeah. But but did did you walk through it on your own? No. Or was there another brother or sister? It was guided. It was guided. It was, and that's part of what I believe. And, you know, we do have such a, uh, 
We've always had such a demand with our culture when we understand the yielding process, and there's so many different avenues, but I've watched the Lord just kind of heal me in my own life. He walked me through some process. And and I just want to say, part of why we teach yielding and finding purpose at our school, part of why we do yielding here at our church, Mm -hmm. is to actually equip us to be able to do this process on our own with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there are some strong men, there are some areas that are really deep that we do need a brother and sister to come alongside and walk us through a process. And that's great. Yeah. I'm well, super I, I, I think sometimes like we can just be so caught up in yes. the, the fear and the confusion yeah. or, it, or even or the pain that it can be too much. It can feel like it's too much for me to go there by myself. Yeah. And that's why, you know, as a sheep, we have to be in a flock. Yeah. Because we, these things are best done together. They really are. You know, and, and James says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you would Maybe be healed. healed. Yeah. You know, and this is also why we stress and love greenhouses and they're growing and we're understanding more. It's going to be really exciting to move into this year and to see what God does afresh with our greenhouses. But this would be part of it is to be able to, in a greenhouse, bear one another's burdens, to be able to bring each other to the Lord, bring each other to the Good Mm -hmm. Shepherd so that he can do the healing. And as we jump from here, I want to get into this, this thief this robber and the offense, these three areas. We've got, you know, Pastor Zach walking us down the thief and the robber. And I love that he brought up that distinction that they're two different things. And I even really appreciated that he dove right in to say, hey, this Greek word kleptes, kleptos, whatever, kleptes, um, really lends to a false teaching. Mm -hmm. And while we're exploring that, if we think about sheep inside of a paddock or whatever it would be, and the shepherd's there, he's coming through the gate. Hey, somebody who's on the other side may be kind of chirping at those sheep to get them to come yeah. and to listen, but they know the shepherd's voice. Right. But the more that that other person or that other wannabe mm-hmm. shepherd starts chirping and teaching all these different things, this is exactly how we get led astray yeah. in the false teaching and the false doctrine. We stop listening to the good shepherd. We, mm-hmm. we've, we've allowed space. We stop staying close. We wonder what's going on over there. Yeah. There, there, there sounds like there's something good going on over there. Wow, that sounds like it's really good. It's kind of stroking my ego. You know, this is why Paul says, all I kept thinking, I feel like I'm all over the place today, Luke. I'm so no, no, sorry. No, 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 but no. all I kept thinking about is when Paul writes to Timothy, it's either 1 Timothy 4 mm-hmm. or 2 Timothy 4, you know, preach the word yeah. in season and Amen. out of season. Because the time is going to come when they're not going to listen to sound doctrine. They're going to yeah. heap up for themselves teachers because they yeah. got itching ears. Right. This is what happens with us as sheep. We distance ourselves from the good shepherd. We start listening to something else that really sounds good. Right. And all of a sudden we're off. Well, and I think that that's a, a vulnerability that we have to uh, recognize in, in all of us Yeah, is, okay, left to my own devices, mm. I'm going to want to surround myself <laughs> with people that are going to say what I want to hear. Yeah. Okay. So what's the solution to that again god gave us his complete word yeah right but how often do we do we it's like we minimize the fact that we have the entirety of scripture at our at our disposal i know so you know a a teacher a pastor a friend a ministry is not going to say anything that is different than the than the word of god if they do then we know it's false Mm. Um, so we have to measure everything by the word of God, even our own our own motives, our own our, yeah. our own desires, because that's that's why reading the Bible is different than reading another book. Mm-hmm. But again, Satan tries to minimize um, the value of Scripture in our in our in our life. Yep. He would rather get you over to some false teacher mm-hmm. that's going to prey on your natural inclinations. Yeah, and part of being in a fold is that we all don't see the world the same way, mm-hmm. and. It's really beautiful to know like, hey, I might have a particular bend this way. Like there's a lot of things I feel very strongly about doctrinally Mm -hmm. and theologically. I am so grateful. Yep. So grateful to be here and to have constant challenge towards those doctrinal and theological beliefs. I'm not offended by them. Mm -hmm. I'm not put off by them. Mm -hmm. I love it because we're sharpening one another. And I'm realizing spending time with some of our elders and my brothers and sisters like, yeah, man, there's a whole bunch of things that I don't know. Yep. And if I think I've got it all packaged up, I'm totally missing it. Right. And and this is why the common the common thread has to be scripture. Yeah. Because otherwise it's just, 
my opinion versus yeah, your opinion. No. Right? And it's like, no, we God has given us his word. And yes. That, and Pastor Zach said that. It's authoritative. It's without error. That's what we believe. And so this always has to be our go-to our and, and the place from which we measure mm. what is being said. Yeah. Um, you know, like he brought up, he brought up the the point that if you are filling yourself, if, if you're if you're filling yourself up with bad teaching, it's taking away from the space that good teaching ought to fill. Correct. Correct. And I want to say too, this is going to become especially important as you know, Antichrist approaches. I know yeah. that his spirit is already in this world. Um, I used to wonder, you know, how are we not going to be deceived as the elect? How are we going to make sure? Because the scripture says that there'll be many mighty signs and wonders to deceive, even if possible, the elect. Right. And so one of the things that we have to know is we have to be rooted and grounded in God's love and in his word. And that word will actually be that filter. Something mm -hmm. won't sit right in our spirit. Yeah. We will know. Oh, we yeah. don't have to be afraid, yeah. but we do have to be students of the word mm -hmm. so that we're not led astray by these different things. So I thought it was a really good point. You know, moving from the, the thievery, which would be like, sort of presented as that false teaching with just so much there we mm -hmm. could park on for a while into the place of offense, dealing with offenses as they come up really regularly um, and choosing. I once heard this, mm -hmm. uh, to choose to be a person who chooses not to be offended, which yes. you, you would have to really practice that. Yes, yes. I had, uh, I had heard someone pray this prayer once where they said like, you know, Lord, give us the, the unoffendable heart. <laughs> and I'm like, that that's a great prayer, but is that's impossible. That's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's hard. Yeah. That's really, really hard. But again, it's when we're walking in the spirit and we're choo like, what are, what am I going after? Yeah. Am I, am I going, am I going after Jesus? Okay. Jesus, show me what to do here. Mm -hmm. And you know, Jesus took the punishment for that offense. Yeah. And we understand when we're, when we're walking in the spirit, we understand, okay, I'm not supposed to live life from a place of revenge. Yeah. You know? The Lord says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So it is not for me to um, hold this person in unforgiveness. I am giving them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I am releasing myself from this war that I am not, a, I am not called to fight. Yeah. The, the danger and the toxicity and yeah. unforgiveness is real. And Pastor yeah. Zach hinted at a few things, some some major illnesses that people were healed from, some cancers they were set free from just yes. by releasing oh, yeah. Yeah. and forgiving. And I will tell you, you know, that has been a big kind of coming to age moment for me in the last three to five years as I didn't realize how much I was harboring in my own heart. Yeah. And I was the type of person that was just so easy to offend. Mm -hmm. And then I'm really good at cutting people off, or I was previously. Yep really good at cutting people off once they offend me. And it's like, now I've rejected you and now you're not a part of my life anymore. And then I'll tell you what, that is such a hard thing to keep up. Living in the freedom of being offended and forgiving people is so yeah. fulfilling and powerful it to is. be like, hey, I can't. You know what? How could I hold that against you? I know my own sin. Like, I'm not the ruler and judge over you. It is. I've been set yeah. free. Yeah. And I... I don't think this part was recorded on Tuesday night when the McNulty's shared with with the serve team. Okay, but I wanted to share this. Um, I I took notes for from it. It was it was it was really powerful. If you were there, you're really blessed by it. Um, if you weren't there, find someone who was. Um, but Sarah was talking about mercy and showing mercy, mm. and she shared this insight that mercy is um seeing someone the way God sees them in their weakness. Oh, that's good. It does not mean that we overlook sin. We pray that God takes the punishment for their sin. That's good. And I think this a barrier to showing forgiveness can be what but what they did was wrong to me. Correct. You're not you're not letting them off the hook in yeah. a sense for what they did. It's yes, there is right and wrong. And, and when we are wronged, we are hurt. Yeah. That hurt is real. Mm -hmm. But what you are doing is you are releasing them yeah. from the hands of Jesus. And you are asking that God would show you how he sees them, mm -hmm. how he sees the situation. And from that place, you can then find healing. Yeah. 
You are you you move yourself off the judgment yes. seat. Yes. You are no longer trying to be the ruler and judge over what their punishment should be. Right. And you just give it over to the Lord. Right. You know, Jesus, when he was reviled, did not revile in return, but he committed himself to him who judges righteously all things. And so we got to do the same thing. Absolutely. And 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 sometimes and you have to do it for, for yourself. Oh yeah. Cause I think sometimes we can we can we get the concept of forgiving others, mm-hmm. but we can't see past the wrongs that we have done. This is so good. You have to forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. And then God will walk you through that path of healing. Yeah. But it starts with relinquishing yourself from being in that role of judge. Yep. Or the role of the accuser. We're really good at playing the accuser. Oh my because goodness. Satan. Um, he is the accuser, and and Sarah painted this this uh, this picture of we're in a courtroom where God is is the judge, Satan is the accuser, Jesus is the advocate. As believers, we are invited to sit with Jesus in the mm. advocate bench. But often, what we end up doing is we put ourselves in the judge seat yep. where God is supposed to sit, um, or we sit with the accuser. I know. Oh, it's so good. It's really important. There's so many different things for us to park on and meditate on and think through. So I'm glad it's the first of the year. I want to just give a little example of this, of how God has healed me through forgiveness. Uh, something came up with uh, my wife and I yesterday, and she she kind of shut down when something happened between the two of us. And then because she shut down, she said something to me that made me shut down. Now, in the past, this this separation of like communication could go on for a little while where I'm over here and I'm meditating on and thinking about what just happened. And she's over here and she's meditating on and thinking about what just happened. And the Lord just began to remind me of some of the things that I've been healed from and delivered from and the things that he brought me through. And I was sitting there, I should think I was dropping off one of the children. They were going out and I was just remembering like, wait a minute, like it doesn't matter what she said because of how she felt. That doesn't mean this is who I am and what I'm going through. Um, I've been delivered from that. And it was like this awesome moment. She didn't say anything bad. She just literally reacted to how she felt. But because of a previous wound in my Mm -hmm. own life, I instantly jumped to, oh my gosh, I'm not different. I'm the same broken person. And the enemy wanted to be right there to bring that accusation. I'm like, wait a minute. No, I'm not. I was delivered from Mm -hmm. that. So I'm not going to hold this offense against Mm -hmm. my wife any longer. We're just going to move on. I'm sorry I made that mistake. Amen. I'm sorry I slipped up. And it was just awesome. Something that could have been mm-hmm. so drawn out was just instantly taken care of. I was just like, this is practical, really easy. So I think not avoiding those situations as they come up, it can be very uncomfortable, whether it's with a child or with a spouse or a friend, how many times we're bumping into one another. But the issue of offense is real and we got to deal with it. We cannot continue to stay in a place of offense, which leads to unforgiveness, unforgiveness, leads to bitterness, and that bitterness is a place and we don't want to be. As the scripture says in Hebrews, be careful, lest any root of bitterness springing up defile many. You're looking for something over there, buddy. What you got going on? You're studying. I'm like, what's where are we at? I'm trying to pull it up. Pull it up. Yeah, well, you know, in Ephesians, it says like, uh, you know, be angry, but do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Yeah. You know, it's, it's important that we understand that our emotions, again, are ways that the enemy can find a way in. Mm-hmm. And it's an access point and For sure. to, to steer our heart and to get our attention away from Jesus. Yeah. And this is why it's important that we are guided by truth because tr- whatever, you know, truth is true regardless of how someone feels about it. Mm-hmm. So I might feel different things at different times. But I have to be anchored in truth. Yeah, truth is the is is what guides my life, and then I pray that God would bring my heart in line with His truth, mm. even if my emotions or um you know my feelings are somewhere else. I acknowledge that with Him. I'm feeling this way. Your word says this. I choose to believe your word. Please guide me in 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 bringing my heart and my emotions along with with your truth. Yes, yes. And that has to be the reality rather than allowing our emotions to right. run the show and the feelings to run the show. It's got to be the truth mm-hmm. that leads the way. That's Amen. awesome. 
That's good stuff. Hey, do you have any final thoughts or closing remarks for today? Because I definitely want to pray over us. I did. I did. So there was one passage that um, I was thinking about during service, um, and it's from Jude, which is only one chapter, um, verses 20 through 25. Mm. And I, I think it really plays, it shows this dynamic approach of how life is with the shepherd and how there's, there is messiness as we walk out um, this journey and this ministry that we are called to, not just with ourselves, but with others, but trusting that he is the one who is guiding us. And it says, um, so Jude says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, mm. keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And have mercy on some who are doubting, save others, snatching them out of the fire, and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by, their, by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Mm. And it's just that line, now to him who is able to keep yeah. you from stumbling. Yep. So as we serve him, as we live out the ministry that he's called us to, as we interact with people in our life who are broken like us, who, who are still sinning, we do that by the power of the Spirit, knowing that our shepherd is stronger than us mm. and he will keep us from stumbling. Yes. Yes, it's got to be him. I, you know, this whole this whole message is encapsulated by that. It's got to be him. Mm -hmm. And we have to stay close to him and we got to listen to his voice and then not be afraid if he brings something up. Yeah. You know, I, I imagine I'm not a, a sheep farmer or whatever. I'm not a shepherd. But I imagine that if something happens to the wool, you know, of a sheep and that shepherd knows like this can be really dangerous for the rest of his body, but I'll catch it while it's still on the wool, and he goes and shears it off. You know, it's not a painful process, but it's probably a, an, an annoying process for that sheep. And it's like, yeah. well, I was I was saving this. I was saving this for something good. Something good was going to Why are you go. holding me down? <laughs> <laughs> so in that sense, it is painful yeah. and annoying. <laughs> but we have to trust our shepherd. Like, hey, there's something that needs to get groomed off of you right here. And if you allow me, I'll be gentle. And it's a beautiful process Absolutely. that the Lord brings yeah. us through. Yeah, and a lot of this has to do with healing of painful memories mm -hmm. and and areas of sin in our life that we've opened ourselves up to either as believers or before and what god is doing is he's showing you how he is present there and now how his truth beats the lies and the the havoc of the enemy and then you're going to walk into this freedom yeah that frees you up um for service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be used by him and for him. Hey, I feel like we should both pray today. So I'm going to start sure. and you close us out. Father, we thank you so much for all the work that you've done in our lives. And I just see us right now, um, like Hezekiah, just being mm. led around the walls of our lives, our souls, to be able to inspect with you, to allow you to take inventory of any areas of our, of our heart, like Pastor Zach said on Sunday, any areas of our heart that need to be addressed, maybe Walls need to be patched. Maybe cracks are starting to develop and they're getting bigger. Uh, or maybe there's been an enemy just jumping over, just been getting through from the other side. We need your help to reveal these things. And as you reveal them, help us to humbly trust you that you're the good shepherd. You're going to do the work, but we need to release our heart to you. We thank Amen. you for this in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your truth that guides our life that your truth is unchanging, that you have given us your word. And so, Father, we recommit ourselves to mm. walking in your truth, mm. uh, to being led by your truth. And we pray um, that you would speak to us louder than ever before, um, that if there are areas in our life uh, where we have been distracted, that we would just repent from those and just look right back to you, knowing that you are there. Um, and if there's fear in our hearts, we repent from that. And we know that you you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And so we go forward with you, 
knowing that you are our comforter and you are our counselor and you are with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, folks, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. I'm Kurt. And I'm Luke. That's The Breakdown. We will see you next week. Give me a-